Happy spring of 2023 to my ballistic blood brothers and sisters in arms. We recently had fun looking through a massive selection of German machine guns and as I was peeking around in the inventory for the upcoming May uh, premiere auction down at Poland's, I noticed we have a collection of something else down there that I found rather interesting. The Browning uh, 1919 machine gun family. Now, that's something that it's not uncommon to see a Browning 1919, but we have several examples in this one auction, in one place at one time, and how can I resist not putting them together? So we've got a typical Ramo, fully transferable uh, Browning 1919. This time it's uh, chambered in 308. It was actually assembled on an Israeli kit. Now, to go with that, we also have one of the miniature half-size Tipman 1919 transferable machine guns. Pretty cool to have those both together. But for real icing on the cake, we also have a double size classroom training version of the 1919. And this thing is a cutaway allowing you to see inside of the gun during the operations so you can really get an idea how these things actually work. Uh, a lot of people look at these things and, and some people wonder what's happening inside that magical rectangular box other people couldn't care less, they just like hitting the trigger and seeing what it does. But a lot of us like to understand exactly what's happening in there. And I thought this would be a fantastic opportunity to take a look at three different size variants. And as a bonus, we also have a, another Tipman half size, the 1917, the earlier variant that was water cooled. So let's take a little walk down Browning Lane and see if we can learn something together today. beginning. Let's talk a little bit about the Browning 1919 in itself. The 1919 is one of the most iconic military firearms to ever find its way into service. It's been used in conflicts from the early 1920s right up through Vietnam and there are several variations of it. The 1919 is a closed bolt fired machine gun and it is recoil operated. It is belt fed either by cloth belts uh, or on disintegrating links. And the 1919 is the air-cooled version of the 1917, with the largest difference being the barrel jacket itself. Instead of having a large uh, water cooling jacket like the 1917, the 1919 has a slimmer, slotted barrel jacket for air cooling. It was actually developed to be the, the go-to uh, Browning tank gun for World War I, but it was introduced just a little bit too late. It was offered in both the fixed and flexible design, and the fixed became uh, kind of a go-to as a military vehicle mounted gun, while the focus of the flexible was more for an infantry level machine gun. There were several mounting variations that were available too. So this thing could be fired from a tripod, it could be fired from a vehicle mount. There was even an A6, the 1919 A6 variant, which included a bipod and a shoulder stock to make it a little bit more friendly for one person to just run and gun without having all that extra mounting equipment with it. Today these Browning designs are highly sought after by recreational shooters and collectors. They're, uh, they're commonly encountered uh, being utilized in uh, 8mm Mauser, in 30 odd 6 and in 308. Barrels are inexpensive, parts are inexpensive, and they're quite readily available. And that way, whatever ammunition happens to be on the market at a reasonable price, the guns can easily be configured to that caliber, making it a whole lot easier on your wallet. This particular 1919A4 uh, is built on a Ramo side plate, a GI parts kit on a Ramo side plate with a short M2 tripod, and it's uh, currently configured in 308. For matter of fact, it comes with everything you need, including uh, links and a linking machine to be ready to roll right out the gate. So it's a really neat turnkey package for somebody that's a little bit newer to the 1919 platform of guns. Let's take a peek at an earlier variant that was chambered in 30 odd six that we got a chance to get a little bit of trigger time on not long ago.
these Tipman guns are gorgeous, fully functional, half-scale variants of that iconic Browning design. They were most common in just a few different configurations. The 1919, the air-cooled, just like the full-size, shrunk down to half-scale. The 1917, the water-cooled version, and the Ma Deuce. And uh, just like their full-size counterparts, most could be fed from either a cloth belt or disintegrating links. These things are accurate right down to the smallest detail as well. The tripods, the, the little tiny T and E mechanism, they're unbelievable. If you ever get a chance to look at one closely, you won't believe the craftsmanship that goes into making one of these Tipman machine guns. Now, thankfully, there were several that were manufactured before the cutoff of May 19th of 1986. And uh, we have one of those in this upcoming auction, a 1919 fully transferable, full auto, Tipman half-scale Browning machine gun. We also have a semi-automatic variant of the 1917. A little bit of something for everybody. Tipmans typically come in an oak crate uh, that look just like the originals and uh, have half-scale ammo cans with them as well. The Ma Deuce version, the one that was the half-scale variant of the 50 BMG, were typically available in either 22 Magnum or 17 HMR. So you even have a little bit bigger round than your typical Tipmans have that are, that are 22 long rifle. You can encounter a few different types of belts that were used to feed these guns. Uh, the earliest was an elastic, stretchy fabric, similar to what you'd find uh, in the waistband of, uh, of uh, underwear. The second was uh, a plastic that had a slit cut for each round. The, the probably most common and most popular is actually a woven stitched belt uh, that looks just like the original full-size belts. Now this belt material, when produced, was produced in 250 foot rolls and they were typically cut down to uh, 100 round increments. That was That's the most common size. You can also find them that are 150 rounds and 200 rounds. And a few years back when Eric Gratz owned and operated Lakeside Machine manufacturing the Tipmans, he actually had a belt that was 93 feet long and held over 3,000 rounds. And he was smart enough not to send that belt to me when I was doing some testing for him years ago. I think we probably know how that would have gone. During that ridiculous period in time from 1994 to 2004, where they had that moronic federal assault weapons ban, uh, these things could only be shipped with 10 round belts. So it's not uncommon to see some 10 round belts out there that were, that were manufactured and shipped during that period. Thank God that's long in the rearview mirror at this point. Let's hope we can keep it there. As far as similarity between the full-size guns and the half-scale Tipmans in operating, uh, the, the biggest difference is they did not use, the Tipmans did not use a locked mechanism like the full-size guns. That little 22 round needed every single bit of energy that it had to, to, to function correctly, and a locked mechanism typically wouldn't run that great with them. Uh, but other than that, very, very, very close. It is a slotted bolt with a T-slot that runs down the front. And as we're going to discuss in just a few moments here, uh, the operation was very, very similar to the originals. And this brings us to the third variant, the, the variant that a lot of people never really knew existed, the double-scale classroom training cutaway model. Now this, just like it sounds, is a double scale, it, it's two times larger than the original, and the side plate is cut away, as well as a lot of the major components to allow you to be able to see exactly what's happening inside when you cycle that bolt and when you hit that trigger. It was manufactured for uh, large classrooms where you had groups of people that uh, needed to know how these operated in situations where one-on-one -on -one type classes wouldn't make the most sense. And since there are so many of us here, and we're so far apart, let's take a look at that double-size classroom training cutaway, and let's see how the Browning really works, because that's one thing I don't see in a lot of videos. I can find videos of people shooting Tipmans. I can find plenty of videos of people shooting full-size 1919s. What I typically don't see are people that are actually discussing what's happening inside of that magical rectangular box. The first thing that you'll notice is a slot cut in the bolt itself, regardless of which size it is. There's going to be a slot cut in the bolt. It's either going to start on the top left and go to the rear right, or the other way around, the top right and go to the rear left. You will find some bolts that are slotted both ways, either way, or with both slots in them, 
and these were, would allow guns to be set up as doubles, left side and right side, so they could feed from the outside and, and drop the belt in the center. The casings, regardless of which bolt you use, are dropped directly below the gun, right below the action of the gun, so they don't fly out the opposite side of the receiver, which is typical with a lot of firearms. To coincide with this slot, you will find a long bar with a peg on the back that, that interacts with that slot in the bolt. So as it comes front and rear, it makes the action go side to side. And that's what operates the feed pulse, pulling the belt into the gun with each action. In the front of the bolt is a T-slot. And the way that that works is it grabs the round that's in the belt, pulls it to the rear, that round drops down the slot, and when a bolt moves back forward again, it pushes it into the chamber where it can then be fired. On the second action, after you fired the round, the same time it's extracting a round in that T-slot, it's also pulling the next one out of the belt. So you have two casings in the slot at the same time. When the new round drops down to move into the chamber position, it pushes the fired casing up down the bottom and out of the slot. So that is how this thing works. Let's take a look at the classroom trainer as Dave is cycling it by hand. You watch really close and you'll see two rounds in that bolt the whole time, always kicking the empty out the bottom of the receiver. cool is that? We have a much better understanding of how the bolt system and the feed system in, in this recoil operated full automatic closed bolt machine gun actually works now and we have three different variants to look at to kind of wrap our brain around it with a little bit of live fire thrown in there because well that's kind of what we like that's what brought us into this in the first place. I hope you enjoyed this video looking at the Tipman 1917, 1919, the full-size Ramo 1919, and the double-size Classroom Trainer 1919. If you did, please click like, share us with your friends in your vast social media universe, subscribe to the channel if you don't already, and make sure that you check out Bunker Branding for the really cool merch that we have. They've got some fantastic t-shirts and their service is lightning fast. I'll put a link over here to the video that we just did on the German machine guns in case you missed that one as well. Till next time, have fun and be safe.